What's going on everybody? My name is Han and 160 is finally here so let's just get right into it. We open with Casca in a bed thinking about how with any thoughts of guts or anything from the old days she gets dragged right back into the horrors of the eclipse. Danan tells her that she can't overdo it and rush things so she puts her in a magically induced sleep so she can get some rest. We find out that Shirka and Farnese are going to study magic with the other mages and as they're about to leave, Farnese notices that Casca's tightly gripping her cape. It seems that even though the old Casca's back, some bits of Elaine are still in there and she still finds comfort in having Farnese with her. I think this is a great little bit of character building. It goes to show just how strong the bond that Casca and Farnese have and that it's still there despite this being a different version of Casca that Farnese doesn't even know yet. I really can't wait to see how their relationship will develop in the future. Danan gives Farnese some of her old magical clothes, and she doesn't feel like she deserves to wear such things, but Shirka tells her that it suits her to give her a little bit of reassurance as we see Serpico watching from the distance. The Archmage tells Farnese to demonstrate what she's learned so far, but Farnese is still insecure about her skills. Shirka tells her that after all she's been through, this'll be nothing. All the other students have their doubts, however, because normally it's almost impossible for adults to learn magic. Farnese casts her spell and her skills blow everyone away, and no one can believe that she could have learned all that in three months, when usually this level of proficiency takes at least one year to achieve, and sometimes multiple years. I asked Shirka how this is possible, and she basically says that when you're down in the trenches, you have to be a fast learner. Shirka is still not comfortable giving herself any credit for Farnese's great skill, even though it's very much deserved. So, Ivalera ends up having to do it for her. Serpico is still watching from behind a tree, and he thinks to himself how this makes him feel conflicted. Okay, let's take a stroll over to Speculation Town. So, people have been speculating about who will be the one to use Guts' as Behalit, and Serpico has always been the prime suspect. The idea is generally that something horrible happens, killing Farnese sometime in the future, and this causes him to use the Behalit either to sacrifice himself or his other friends to get revenge on either Guts or whoever kills her. But here's a new thought. Maybe Farnese just gets to the point where she's so self-sufficient that Serpico doesn't feel like she needs him anymore, and this loss of purpose is what causes him to use the Behalit, and he agrees to sacrifice her. I mean, there's no strong evidence for this at this point, and it's just a little conjecture I thought was an interesting take. So let's get back to the chapter. It's Shirka's turn to demonstrate her skill, so she decides to summon a spirit of darkness. She is easily able to do it, and the spirit kind of freaks out some of the other students in the process. But that's when one of them notices that she summoned the spirit without drawing a magical circle, which is unheard of to the students. When they asked her how she did it, she told them that being in combat made it impossible to draw a magical circle, so she had to learn to etch the symbols into her mind in order to use the spells on short notice. She also tells them that she's had to make use of whatever spirits just happen to be in the area that they're fighting at the moment, and that summoning spirits can be dangerous, but the one that she summoned in her demonstration that scared everyone is actually harmless. It just watches the students while they practice and is just lonely and wants to be friends with them. The Archmage tells his students that they have a lot to learn from Shirka and Farnese. Farnese then asks him if she could learn healing magic, and specifically if she could use it to heal the soul. This would be huge for the group, considering just how much damage Guts takes in battle and in using the Berserker armor. Having a proper healer in the group would be a real game changer, and like it would turn them into like an actual RPG party at this point. Also, if this would let her heal souls, Guts could finally get that astral wound that was inflicted by Slan taken care of. The main reason Farnese wants to learn this, however, is for Casca's emotional damage, and Danan tells Farnese that she'll be teaching her personally. The Archmage then asks Shirka if she would be interested in learning how to communicate with the demon. Not like demon demon, but D-A-E-M-O-N. He tells her that demons do not belong solely to the hereafter, that in life they were human, and that great heroes and sorcerers are among them, including Flora herself. Shirka of course accepts the offer, and is overjoyed with the thought of seeing Flora once again. This is something else that could become huge in the story. 
If Shirka is able to summon great heroes of old in order to help with the fight against the God Hand, and not only that, maybe this magic is capable of even bringing back souls from the Solnado, and we can see the OG Band of the Hawk right again. Again, this is all more baseless speculation, but man, if, if that happened, that'd be so goddamn cool. We then see Guts training with his sword atop a cliffside, with thoughts of Casca invading his mind, and just thinking like, what can he possibly do? That's when a certain skeleton man shows up and tells Guts it is not always a happy thing. Which, I assume he's talking about Casca's reawakening, but I guess we'll just have to wait to the next chapter to find out. I gotta say, I really enjoyed this one. Not a whole lot gets done in this chapter directly, but it just sets up so much potentially awesome stuff that I just can't wait to see where the story goes from here. I think the thing I'm actually looking forward to the most, though, is just finding out just how much of a badass Rickert has become, like, as he's been hanging out with the Bucky Raka. Like, that's the thing I'm looking forward to the most personally, but the stuff with Casca is also way up there. So stay tuned, I definitely plan on covering the chapters as they come out, just like this one, alongside, like, just other Berserk analysis videos, so if you're into that, subscribe. Um, Please rate the video. If you made it all the way through, I really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.